Vulnerable patients are being put at risk in one of the UK's biggest mental health hospitals. I'm undercover to investigate. What's going on at this hospital, by and large, isn't working for the patients and is often actively cruel. Families find out how their loved ones are really being treated. I can't watch that. Sorry. They need sacking. They actually need sacking. This made me worse. What way? Everywhere. I've been preparing for this for months. Truth is, the first time you put on secret cameras, you think that everybody knows. Yeah, yeah. I'm starting work at the Edenfield Center, an NHS mental health unit in Prestwich near Manchester. I'm investigating whistleblower allegations about staff behavior and patient safety. There he is. Are you come for me? Thanks, man. Thank you, mate. I've got a job as a healthcare support worker. I'm paid minimum wage, nine pounds fifty an hour. After a day's online induction, I'm out on the wards, looking after vulnerable and sometimes challenging patients. Patients are detained at Edenfield because there's a serious risk they could harm themselves or others. The hospital says it provides them with individualized care and treatment. This is Harley. She's a patient on a female ward called Buttermere. Pick any pile. This one. You can have that pile. She's showing a support worker a card trick. Is that your card? Yeah. How do you know? Harley's autistic and has a history of self-harm. She sometimes screams and shouts, and I'm told she's assaulted staff. Harley says she's just reacting to the way she's treated. Staff provoke a patient, and then my reaction is used against me, but the provoking us is disgusting. I've been treated by a an animal. When it comes to Harley, most staff show little compassion or understanding. Why did she get sent here? Who? Do you know? She's a cunt. The only thing is, though, now, get rid of her. No one wants her. Why would anybody want her? If we're getting rid of her, that means the battle now. Yeah. But you know what? She's the council of the board. It needs cutting out, and then everywhere will be fine. Patients have their own rooms. Sometimes they can be locked in a more secure area. It's known as seclusion. Just Harley being her. The lads went and put her in holds and she kicked out at them, bit them. It's my turn to supervise Harley. How are you, Harley? You alright? Yeah. 
Patients should only be isolated in seclusion when the behavior is thought to be an immediate risk to others and only for the shortest time necessary. How many days have you done? Harley's been in seclusion for more than two weeks. She's occasionally allowed out, but only into the room I'm observing her from. Harley, do you want to try this? Harley wants to call her sister. She's been told a decision would be made today about when she can come out of seclusion, but it's been delayed. Hello? Hi, is that T, Tiana? It is, yeah. Hi. Harley's not allowed a phone, so I'm holding one up to the intercom. She's upset she's still in seclusion. Harley wants me to tell you that, you, you, that she's being tricked. Tricked? I just felt helpless because I just wanted so bad to get her out of there. But I could barely hear her anyway that I didn't know actually what was going on. She cried like I have never heard a person cry, like, it, and I never want to hear a person cry like that again. It was awful. Unfortunately, we've had a few phone calls like that when she was in there, haven't we? Yeah. Um, but, to be honest, <laughs> you wouldn't do that to a dog, would you? She's autistic at the end of the day. That's, that's just awful. She's just losing more and more hope. It's affecting her physical health and her mental health as well, and she just feels like she was being punished. What's a film is upsetting, but Michelle and Tiana still want to see it. She said to me on the phone that they all ate her and um, they're doing it because they all ate me. They all ate me, she said. And uh, I was like, no, Harley, they don't ate you. They can't ate you. They're not there to eat you. They're there to help you. And clearly I've got it wrong. I feel as though I've lied to my own daughter. It's another two days before a decision is made about Harley's seclusion. She's let out for now, but staff say if she acts up, She'll be straight back in. <laughs> this is Hannah. She's a recently qualified nurse. Today she's in charge of the ward, but she's taking a nap. Didn't think too much of it. I thought maybe, you know, she was just taking a five minute breather. She wasn't, she was out there for about an hour. Properly fast asleep in the sunshine. Headphones in, listening to music. It's good advertising for qualified, that, isn't it? When the ward managers walk past the back of the ward. It's funny, isn't it? And I'd go away and do something else for five, ten minutes and come back and she was still asleep. In full view of the rest of the hospital. Why can't I fucking walk straight, man? It's heavy sleep, It's not just Hannah. While I'm here, I see six other members of staff sleeping on shift. I don't think any of us are professional on it. No, fuck. So, welcome to the <laughs> Buttermere Wood is a strange place. It's got such weird vibes going on with the staff. There's a kind of 
playground mentality. It all feels very kind of um, juvenile. Hello, phone. Nurse Hannah's supposed to supervise the support workers, but often she doesn't behave much like a boss. Steve's one of six support workers looking after eight patients on Buttermere Ward today. We're calling this patient Joanna to protect her identity. Joanna's also now in seclusion. A nurse is getting ready to help her undress. Steve is here too. He jokes about seeing Joanna naked. She's in about as vulnerable a position as a person can be in. I don't know what's going through his head, to be honest. It's a straight bully mentality. Later, I see Joanna hitting her head against the wall. So I ask Steve for advice. Yeah, what do you do when she's like, like smack her head against the wall and all? Right? Yeah. Alright mate, have a good night. Hey? No instruction on what to do and very little in the way of compassion. Two weeks later, I'm on shift with Steve again. He goes from laughing at Joanna to pinching her. <laughs> and he just leant over and pinched this bit of her, uh, of her shoulder, really hard, like a real nasty, elongated pinch. Don't be pinching patients that are really, really sick, like properly, properly unwell. Minutes later, Steve does it again, this time in front of Nurse Hannah. I show my undercover footage to consultant psychiatrist Dr. Cleo Van Velsen and professor of nursing John Baker. The second pinch is more than just a pinch, isn't it? It's bending her arm backwards behind her shoulder. It's you know. an assault. I mean, that, that second thing would be an assault. Treatment in a secure hospital is expensive around £200,000 per patient per year. The hospital says to support patient recovery, there's a wide range of activities on offer, but I don't see much happening. By and large, for a lot of them, it's a really excruciatingly mundane existence, or all there is to do is sit and watch music videos and vape. Most of the patients are sort of floating in this purgatory state. They've been there for a long time before I got there. They'll be there for a long time after I leave. The male unit is not a very nice place to be. Many Edenfield patients have been convicted of serious offenses. This patient was in prison serving a life sentence for murder. He was transferred to Edenfield after having suspected psychotic episodes. Stella's a support worker and supposed to be looking after him. This guy has literally killed someone. And he's been in prison for 10 years, you know, he's midway through a life sentence. And now you're on top of him, tickling him. What are you doing?
from a risk's point of view, she's a young woman putting herself in a really vulnerable position. I think she's invading the patient's interpersonal body space. I think they're in their bedroom, which is a huge issue. It's really, really wrong. And she's so aware of it. You get away with murder here, don't we? She knows that she shouldn't be doing that. It's not just Stella. This support worker, Andrea, is getting up close and personal to another male patient. As well as making herself vulnerable, she's also increasing the vulnerability of the patient and to sexualize the relationship. And it's the one thing you should not do with patients is have a kind of sexualized relationship with them. Staff are supposed to make sure patients don't go into each other's rooms. Please watch it. Please watch it. No one seems to have noticed there are three patients in this room. He's watching. Come here, get out. They don't want me to see the porn they're watching. They know it's not allowed. I think it's really hard to keep secure services sterile. There may be people there with, you know, histories of committing sexual offences. Um, and certainly you don't want kind of unregulated materials loose on wards. This patient's been in and out of hospital for years. He's been told he can move to a less secure ward, but right now there isn't a room for him. He's allowed outside, but has promised to stay on hospital grounds. Today, he says he's going for a jog, but doesn't come back. The police are called. Some patients are allowed beyond hospital grounds as part of the treatment plans. I'm taking one to the supermarket. While we're there, we see another patient who's also out on leave. The patient, who's just bought two bottles of brandy, can be aggressive. The nurse supervising him asks me for help. I rush back to the hospital. I'm later told that after smashing one of the bottles and threatening the nurse, the patient ran off. So that's two patients in two days from the male acute wards that have gone AWOL, that are just kind of out there in the world, wandering around. One of them has a bottle of brandy in him. The other one has a penchant for crack cocaine. The patient drinking brandy was brought back by police the same night. The other was missing for two days. I mean, the only way to stop it is no one ever has leave. You know, somebody will say, why should he go out and leave? Well, because it's part of his therapy and that we have to do it. But you need to just have careful planning. There is an importance of sort of therapeutic risk taking. And a few times it's gonna not work out. I went to uh, a new ward today. I went to Hayeswater Ward. It's very, very small and quite dark and quite cramped, to be honest. I'm looking after a patient who we're calling Alice to protect her identity. She too is being held in a seclusion room. I'm told she's attacked staff and has been locked up like this for more than a year. Thank you, Alice has allowed two teddy bears and almost nothing else. Not even a photo of her granddad who died while she was in here. This patient, they don't know what to do with her, so she has to sit in a box all day. 
She has only seen other people through a little pane of glass. It's time for Alice's medication. She says she's been unwell and thinks she might throw up her pills. Nurse Sarah says if Alice is sick, she'll have to inject her. Right, you have them meds. If you bomb, I'll be like Edward Scissorhands, except with needles, and I'll be coming in and jabbing you. <laughs> eh? Yeah, if you're sick, I'll come and jab you. <laughs> with pleasure. Four times. Four times. Like that. Yeah, two at once. Two at once. So behave yourself. One of the tablets Alice has to take is an antipsychotic called clozapine. Less than two hours later, Alice is handed another dose. The new nurse on duty realizes a mistake has been made. I don't realize Alice has been told to take the same drugs twice, or how dangerous that could be. But the nurses do. Just leave him there. What happens? Hey. Too much of that. Plus An overdose is avoided, but only because Alice is able to tell staff what's happened. As a nurse, from the point where you take those tablets out of the bottle, it's your responsibility to make sure the patients had them, and then your responsibility to sign to say that the patients had them. It is very common for mistakes around the administration of medicines to happen. But actually it says to me that for a drug like clozapine, where, where you're not checking whether somebody's already had them, or they've not been signed to say that they've had them, it, it's quite worrying. Hello there. Alice is on a 30 minute break from the seclusion room, supervised by support worker Cheryl. Alice is talking about her previous ward, Buttermere where she was allowed her own blanket and more soft toys. Yeah. But when you are now, Bottomir is very different to his one. Yeah, no blanket, five dollars. Who the fuck, what you have next door? <laughs> <laughs> we are not Bottomir, so we get that out of your head. You're lucky you've not got a straw fucking belly man. I can't ride with you a straw bed by cows and for sleep on <laughs> What? You know, she was joking. It wasn't funny. She has all the power in the situation. And the saddest thing is, this patient's just kind of used to being talked to like that. I find this, the footage we've seen so far, it's quite disgusting, really. Mm. The language that they're using is very dehumanising to her. It's not the only time I see Cheryl being cruel to patients. <laughs> this patient has a history of self-harm and Cheryl's just dragged her to the floor. Then, in front of the patient, Cheryl accuses her of exaggerating her health issues. Here's Cheryl playing a game with another patient. She doesn't seem to know when to stop. We're calling the patient Claire. She's been at Edenfield for several years. 
she walks around and gets largely ignored when she asks for things. I really like this patient. She's great crack. She's really interesting. Are you all right? Claire's diagnosed with schizophrenia. She's not allowed in the bathroom alone for her own safety. Support worker Cheryl complains about having to help Claire. I wasn't thinking anything other than having to look at your ass or where biohazard fucking waste comes out. Honestly, I just, I've never known anyone to shit like that. It looks like Claire's become so used to being treated like this, she thinks it's normal. Cheryl breaks boundaries with the patient, and then the patient feels able to break boundaries with her. And then does Cheryl expose her flesh to slap her? It's bullying, actually. It's just quite shocking. During all of this, a senior nurse is sat right next to Cheryl and does nothing to stop it. We're seeing several registered nurses engaging in the behaviours, being part of the crowd, not leading the crowd. And I think that's the worrying thing around this, is that who's setting the tone around clinical leadership on these wards? Patients here are prescribed psychiatric medication. It's time for Claire's weekly injection, but she's anxious about it and has pulled a blanket over her head. Support worker Cheryl and nurse Sarah could try to persuade her. Instead, they move in. Oh, no, you take it. No, you take it. No. 